Dynasty Warriors Strike Force taking button mashing to a whole new level of fun. It's like calculated button mashing. I like these games and there's so many of them I can never keep them straight. They're like Godzilla movies. I have no idea what order they come in. They're fun. They're somewhat mindless and they have people flying all over the screen screaming and exploding. Sounds like a good time to me. The big thing with Dynasty Warriors Strike Force is that you can play with up to three of your friends as a four-person team, slaughtering your way through wherever the hell these people are fighting. Oh, it seems that the heavens have forsaken us. One of the things I always like about these games is that even if you lose a battle or lose a mission, you still get experience points. Although I just won that battle, obviously you get more if you win. The missions are relatively short and contained, and even if you lose, you just restart it, play it again, try something different. But you hang on to your experience points and keep growing your characters until they turn into like Jedi Masters. There's tons of weapons in this game to buy, lots of characters to play as, and you can outfit your team with different weapons and chi and all that stuff. It's definitely button mashing on the surface, but it is deeper than that. As you may notice on screen, the gameplay can get pretty frantic at times, so it does take a little while to play just to get into it. Especially if you've never played these games before, and this one also has aerial combat. You guys can like float around the screen, and there's enemies that are also flying around shooting you. That can be a bit clumsy at first until you sort of figure out the camera controls and how to lock on to bad guys and stuff. Here's my best shot. When you hit people or get hit, your fury gauge on the bottom left fills up and then you can transform into this glowing uh, form, which gives you some more strength. You have a couple different attacks and there's even some combos in there. I'm carrying two different swords at the moment, each of which are slightly different so I can switch back and forth between swords. And the more you play the game, the more you'll just figure out the weapons. You can make new weapons, attach orbs to them to give them certain powers. And uh, yeah, while, while this game is definitely button mashing, there's a lot more to it than, than just that, and it will take a while to really figure it all out. Also, it's fun, so I, I always find these, these games have nice replay value. If you have some time to, time to play them and build your characters up and buy things, you're collecting items and artifacts or whatever as you're playing through the game, and you can use them to help upgrade your weapons and buy new ones. Sometimes the camera perspectives can be a bit funky as you see, but when, as you play the game, you get used to it. You can jump and dash your way out of danger easily once you get the lay of the land and the feel of the gameplay. One of the things I like about this game is that you can take meat buns into battle with you. Several of them. Like a bag of meat buns. They give you health. They don't specify what kind of meat, though. Is it dragon meat? Swordfish? Tiger? Snork, what kind of meat is it? I'd like to believe it's Snork. So while this game may be optimized for multiplayer, and you can switch between multiplayer and single player when you're in one of those towns, they have not sacrificed any fun in the single player game. Being able to give commands to your team is actually quite effective. You can tell them to attack soldiers, you can tell them to attack bosses, or just uh, make up their own mind and do what they want to do. And they're not just going to sit in the corner and watch as you get killed, although it kind of looks like that right now. Now, they're, they're fairly responsible. They will go out and just stab people. That's what they do. I can't believe I lost. I must withdraw for now. I have to be in an officer. I've no choice but to retreat for now. It's a victory if you like this series of games, because this one is just as much fun as any of the other ones, and throw some new stuff in there that's different but doesn't completely screw up the gameplay. Dynasty Warriors Strike Force is on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. We're watching the 360 version. 
It's a sizable game, it's a fun game. You can play with button mashing or you can use some serious tactics. Combine the two. Highly customizable. And while it may look frantic on screen if you've never played these, if you like action games, give them a try. And there's a certain sense of satisfaction that you get in this game when there's four of you wailing on one end boss until they finally just die screaming into a puff of blue flame or something. Dynasty Warriors, strike force! Right, understood. I should mention that there's about 40 playable characters in the game, and if you want to play multiplayer with your friends competitively or as a co-op mission, you need to do so online, over the internets. There's no local co-op, so you have to use futuristic space age technology to play your friends over the cyber web space. Dynasty Warriors Strike Force. Dynasty War- what if they just dropped the Warriors and went with Dynasty? The video game based on the TV show. That would be guaranteed to suck.